Federal agents searching the home of Congressman Henry Cuellar 24 hours ago, authorities taking items out of the house. Tonight, the FBI confirming it was a quote, court authorized operation. Now, last week we learned that corporate Democrat Henry Cuellar was raided by the FBI. It was a pretty shocking story, but we had few if any details in regard to what the raid was about. Well, now we have some more details and we had speculated that corruption might have something to do with it. Lo and behold, now we learn about his increasingly shady ties with the oil company in Azerbaijan and how foreign money might have flowed into the pockets of various members of Congress. But Cuellar certainly has been one of the biggest advocates for the Azerbaijani government. I'll give you the details based on reporting by The Intercept. So The Intercept writes that while little is known about the specific FBI probe, which involves the Department of Justice's public integrity section, Cuellar's relationship to Azerbaijan is well documented, and indeed it is. In fact, he had gone to Azerbaijan back in 2013, and this was a trip that was paid for by a group that has gotten into significant amounts of trouble since. So in 2013, January 2013 to be exact, Cuellar and his spouse flew to Turkey and Azerbaijan on a trip sponsored by an entity calling itself the Turquoise Council of Americans and Eurasians. The trip for the Cuellars cost just south of $20,000 and was approved by the House Ethics Committee. Kamal Oks. Oksus, listed as Turquoise Council President, told the Ethics Committee that no, this is important, no foreign money paid for the trip, according to disclosures. But it turns out that that claim that no foreign money paid for that trip might be questionable. Now, nothing has been proven in regard to that particular trip yet. But here's what we know about this organization known as the Turquoise Council and how it got implicated with foreign money later. So in 2018, Oksus pleaded guilty to concealing that a separate congressional trip in May of 2013 to Azerbaijan had been funded by Sokar, the state oil company of Azerbaijan, a wholly owned national oil and gas company. Oksus had claimed that the trip in question was paid by for the Tur Turquoise Council and that the embassy of the Friends of Azerbaijan also paid for this, both of which purport to promote regional and transnational cooperation. But it turns out that there was in fact foreign money flowing to these organizations, right? So uh, Oksus, for uh, his part in this, was actually sentenced back in 2019. He was convicted, okay? All right, so now. Here's what we know. Court documents show that Oksus wired $750,000 from Sokar, remember that is the oil company in Azerbaijan, in order to organize travel for 10 house members and their staff to Azerbaijan. Now, Cuellar did not go on this second trip. Prior to this deposit, the assembly of the Friends of Azerbaijan, one of the nonprofits involved in the travel scheme, had only $283.15 in its checkings account. So it's important to understand where the funding for these organizations come from, because since it is foreign money, which then was transferred over to members of Congress for these trips, laws were broken. Believe it or not, even in the United States where legalized bribery reigns supreme, there are still some restrictions, some limitations, especially as it pertains to foreign money. You don't want foreign governments paying off or bribing our elected officials, at least for now. Who knows what the future holds? We are, of course, the United States, one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Now, here's what we know so far. Sokar is the largest company and source of tax revenue in Azerbaijan. So this is an incredibly important source of revenue for the country. The company has embarked on ambitious plans to build a network of pipelines that stretch through multiple countries to deliver gas to Europe. The so-called Southern Gas Corridor, built by Sokar in partnership with BP and other Western energy giants, required an investment of over $45 billion. Now in comes Cuellar. This is where Cuellar might be implicated. And remember, the FBI is not willing to just go in and raid a US member of Congress. 
uh, unless there is significant evidence, unless there's, of course, probable cause. The reason they were able to do these raids in both the uh, home and office of Henry, Henry Cuellar's is because they have uh, probable cause and they have uh, reason to believe that there might be some wrongdoing, maybe some uh, campaign finance issues at play. And uh, this is what we know, okay? In September of 2013, uh, Cuellar and other lawmakers sponsored a resolution in Congress expressing support for Azerbaijan's Southern Gas Corridor project, stating that it was in the US national interest to support construction and work closely with the governments of Turkey, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and others in the region to have the pipeline completed. So, how so? How does this serve the US interest? Seems like it only serves Azerbaijan's interest. And considering the ties that Cuellar has had with Azerbaijan, both in the form of going on these trips and possibly the funneling of foreign money, again, possible, that hasn't been confirmed yet with Cuellar, seems like he's not really concerned about the US interests at play. It seems like he's interest, interested in his own financial incentives here. Because again, what, why would it benefit the United States or the citizens of the United States for Azerbaijan to be able to um, you know, succeed in this uh, pipeline that they're trying to build, by the way, through multiple countries? And Armenia comes into play as well, because if you can recall, we had talked about the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict where uh, Azerbaijan essentially uh, invaded Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, basically Evicted, got rid of Armenians who had been living there in those homes for years. And it looks like Cuellar was very much involved in preventing humanitarian aid from getting to Armenians who had been displaced as a result of that conflict. I'll get to that in just a second. But here's what Cuellar did and how he succeeded in convincing Congress to go along with what Azerbaijan wanted here. So uh, Cuellar pushed for a, a resolution essentially to support Azerbaijan in its pipeline. The resolution was adopted by the House Foreign Affairs Committee by unanimous consent. In 2020, a portion of the pipeline across the uh, Adriatic Sea began commercial operations to deliver gas from Azerbaijan to Italy. Cuellar's corruption on behalf of the Azerbaijani oil company continued for years to come. It didn't just stop there. So for instance, in April of 2015, Cuellar announced an affiliation agreement between Texas A&M International University and the Assembly of the Friends of Azerbaijan, described in a Cuellar press release as an educational and cultural organization. But which we now know by Oksus's admittance that it was a front for the Azerbaijani oil company. Okay, so they're going into universities, you have Cuellar, you know, speaking up on their behalf, uh, passing resolutions to support this pipeline. Uh, it's insane, absolutely insane. And here are some other things to keep in mind. Um, Oxus was also a massive campaign donor uh, for Cuellar. Uh, to give you one example, Cuellar received $1,000 from Oxus in June of 2012 and another $2,500 in February of 2015. These are just direct campaign donations uh, to Cuellar by someone who who's now convicted of funneling foreign money to Congress. Very nice. And getting back to that issue of Nagorno-Karabakh and the Armenians who were displaced from that region. Well, Cuellar, a co-chair of the Congressional Azerbaijan Caucus. Do you guys know that that even existed? That there was a Congressional Azerbaijan Caucus? Continued to promote Azerbaijan's interests. Following the devastating Armenia-Azerbaijan war in 2020, fought over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region, Cuellar petitioned his congressional colleagues to ensure that any humanitarian aid for the conflict would be provided through the government of Azerbaijan. Okay, let's stop for a second. So Azerbaijan, which invades and displaces Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh, is going to be given the humanitarian aid to then give to the very people they victimized? How does that make any sense at all? It continues, to ensure that any humanitarian aid for the conflict would be provided through the government of Azerbaijan or UN organizations and not given directly to Armenia. So when you take a look at how our international relations work, when we consider why it is that we support some countries 
while uh, engaging in humanitarian violations, uh, human rights abuses in other countries like Yemen, for instance. I mean, you just have to follow the money. It is insane. Now, again, a lot of this uh, is kind of up in the air right now. It isn't proven that Cuellar has taken foreign money just yet, and I wanna be clear about that. But it appears that the very organizations that Cuellar was working with have in fact been implicated in funneling foreign money, Azerbaijani money, to members of Congress in order to lobby support for a pipeline that was being constructed through several countries in that region. This is how foreign policy works. This is what foreign policy is, okay? All this nonsense that Americans hear about regarding, oh, you know, we want to make sure that we're policing the world, that we're spreading democracy, that we're protecting humans from human rights abuses, it, it's nonsense. Because as you can see, while we simultaneously spout that nonsense, we're also committing our own human rights abuses at our border, our own human rights abuses by assisting with the Saudi backed uh, destruction in Yemen. I mean, the, the examples go on and on. Uh, we engage in orchestrating coups in, in Latin American countries that have democratically elected leaders that we just don't like because we want to make sure that they don't nationalize their resources. We want to make sure that our business interests can take full advantage of those resources. I mean, this is just incredibly disgusting behavior. I mean, you have Cuellar without all of this scandal. Cuellar, who is a corporate Democrat, an individual who voted along with Trump more often than most people even realize. Someone who claims to be a Democrat, but seems to agree quite a bit with the worst elements of the Republican Party. I mean, I'm glad he's being primaried. I'm glad that Jessica Cisneros is going at it again. And you know, she came very close to defeating him in the last primary. And I hope she defeats him. I hope that he's successfully primaried because this is a guy who clearly regardless of whether all of this gets proven or not, is only in it for the money, in it for himself, in it because he's a narcissistic egomaniac who has no position representing anyone, much less the best interests of Texans. So for Democrats who live in his district, take a good hard look at who Cuellar really is. Take a good hard look at who he's telling you he is. Because it doesn't matter, he can be bought by anyone, including Azerbaijan. Which I'm sure he doesn't really care about at all, but as long as they're paying up, that money speaks. Clearly, he's he's interested in promoting anything as long as his campaign coffers benefit from what he's promoting. So we'll see how this story develops. I'm very curious to see how it goes, but I'm glad that we have a few more details about what that raid might have been about. Uh, once we have more details, of course, we'll share them with you. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.